But there you are in the middle of it. And now you got to deal with it. you got to deal with what's going on and what's happening. You know, Jesus will be with you in those times. He'll be with you in the hard times. He's not just a, a God that's just there when everything's going well, but he's especially there when you say, God, where are you? And he's saying, child, if you'll just open your ears for one moment and get your eyes off the problem and get your eyes on me, you'll realize I've been there the whole time. He won't leave you. Jesus won't leave you. He's faithful. Are you going to believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? I haven't felt his presence. I don't know what's going on. Things are going on around and about. They're falling apart. And God, I just don't feel you like I used to. Well, all you got to do is just get up a little closer to Jesus. And you'll find he never left me. Jesus never left me. He never leaves you. He's faithful. He is in every situation of your life. Whether you find you had a golden opportunity and it wasn't so golden after all. Said, man, that thing was golden. I thought it was solid. Turns out it was just gold plated. You began to wear that wonderful jewelry and you, your neck started turning green. You realize this thing isn't gold. It's not what it all looked like it was going to be. Or that wristwatch, and you start sweating. Say, man, what is going on here? Why is my wrist turning green? It ain't all gold. That's why. But even in those situations, in the times of your life, and you say, man, you might go, man, I made a doozy out of this. I saw the cliff, and I just kept on going. You know, you break the rules regardless of whether you're a Christian you know, life rules, whether you're a Christian or whether you don't know the Lord, you, bla- you break life rules, you're going to have the same consequences. We pray for, for deliverance. God's saying, quit making those decisions. That is your deliverance. Right? But we learn. We like to learn. We have the school of hard knocks, right? Hard knocks. We like, we like to learn. That wasn't knocking on wood, or was it? No, that's compressed Fiberboard, okay, all right, for all the technically minded folks, right? (laughs) But either way, Jesus will be there for you. It's not all about just amassing what you can in this life. That's not what it's all about. Sometimes you miss the greatest opportunities. This is a man here in chapter 7 of Joshua by the name of Achan who he saw an opportunity. He thought it was. And he ended up paying a price for this opportunity because he forsook the greater opportunity. There are opportunities that come your way and you realize, but what is it going to cost to pursue this opportunity? We have to think about those things in our lives and especially as Christians. We have to think about what is it going to cost me if I pursue this opportunity Will it drive a wedge in my house? Will it drive a wedge in my family? Will, will it create an undue hardship? Will it, will, it cause, uh, will it cause me to put in more time in these things and, and forsake uh, going to church and forsake Bible reading and forsake soul winning and forsake uh, uh, paying my tithe and giving? And the, oh, will it cause me to forsake those things? Will I, in the the pursuit of uh, the blessing, forsake the blesser? We have to think about those things. Achan was a man who acted before he thought. He acted before he thought. We're not going to read the whole thing, but you can read the chapter later on. There were some things going on, and God was blessing Israel. He was leading them into a great country, a land they called the promised land, a land by the name of Canaan. It was told it was a land flowing with milk and honey. In other words, there was all kinds of blessings there in that land. And on the way, they had some things they had to do. The promise was given, but they still had to go out and conquer this land. And here Joshua, who has succeeded Moses as leader, is there leading the armies of God's people into these areas so they can conquer and take that which rightfully was promised to them by God. 
And they're in the process of doing this. But there was a man who saw an opportunity in the midst of conquering. And things turned wrong. They didn't go right. And Joshua said, what is going on? There's some, there's some craziness taking place. And so he, like a, like a good minister, he began to pray. He began to pray. He prayed for the people. He prayed on, God, what is going on here? And, and God told him, get up. What are you crying for? Basically is what he said. I'm paraphrasing it. The GPV, guess paraphrase version, right? <laughs> he said, get up. Said the same thing similar to Moses. What are you crying for? This is what's happened. They sinned. They've messed up. And that's why this is going on. This is what you need to do. You need to root out the sin. You need to get rid of it. Or it's going to spread to the rest of of the congregation. It's going to spread to the rest. If you don't deal with it, it's going to spread to the rest. And so he, according to God's guidance and direction, he began to call for the families. The tribes were to present themselves by the heads of their families. And it went to the tribe of Judah. And from further on down the line, it got a little more specific. Finally, too, it got to a man by the name of Achan. And Joshua said to Achan, tell me. What have you done? What have you done? And he began to say, well, this is what I did. I, I saw some Babylonian garments and some silver and, and gold wedges. And I took them. And I, and I hid them in my tent. And... And that's what I did. So yeah, he confessed. But his confession came too late. His confession came too late. See, there's times in life when we decide and we do things. But the confession comes too late. When the damage has already been done. And in God's eyes, there was too serious of a situation, he couldn't just let him walk away scot-free. Don't worry. We'll get to the victorious, okay? We got to deal with some things, though. We have to deal with some things. Because it was the sin that costed them the victory. And not only this, but if you'll notice, when they went up against the city to fight against it, 36 men lost their lives because of this man's disobedience to God. And so we have to be mindful when we make these decisions in life and we make a decision about the way we're going and how we're going to proceed with our lives going forward that the decisions we make, though they might be beneficial to us in the immediate, they could cost others in the long term. For these men who died, I pray they were right with the Lord. It was their eternity at stake. And it was the eternity of Achan and his family at stake. So after Joshua found out the problem, he called the man out and he said, give God the praise. Tell us what happened. And he told them. And we read later. And this is how serious it was. I'm thankful for God's grace. I'm thankful for God's grace. Because imagine if God had to deal with us like this now. They were commanded to stone him. With stones. All those. Who hate, they had betrayed. For just a quick buck. Are now stoning them. Could you imagine being on the other end? That's my friend. But I have to love God more than I love them. They began to stone them with stones. Till they died. 
they die. See, there was an irreversible situation at that point. It was so serious that he, God could not allow this thing to continue. Because if would not, not only would he have sanctioned, if he was walking around the camp with that Babylonian garment, you know what that represented? It represented a false worship of other gods. And God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. God would have been sanctioning their false worship. And therefore, it had to be dealt with. It was a serious situation. He thought it was a golden opportunity. But it was not so golden after all. But all the while, if you notice in the accounts later on, God wasn't against them getting the spoils. Because later on in the account, after the sin had been cut off, and after they began to pursue the same city again, they conquered and overcame it. And it says the people took the spoils. God is not against you being enriched. What he's against is if you enrich yourself at the expense of serving him. And for, in other words, forsaking God in order that you may have this temporal thing. It will cost you. It will cost you every time. And sometimes that isn't as evidence as it is here. The judgment was swift. Sometimes it's a process of years. And you realize, I'm paying the price for this thing because I didn't do it right the first time. I skated and coasted along for a while. But now I'm realizing I didn't do it right. And that's why I'm facing this situation right now. Here's the wonderful thing. You have an opportunity today. Fess up to your mess up. Just go ahead and fess on up to it. If you messed up, if you made a mess of your life, if you made a mess, if you realize, man, I shouldn't have done those things, and I did them anyway. If you realize that, what you can simply do is say, Jesus, I messed up. I'm coming to you right now on the basis of your forgiveness, on the basis of your blood, on the basis of your mercy. And God, I'm flinging myself to your mercy and to your grace today.